So the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 is the newest and the best tablet from Samsung, and it came out about a month ago. And in the first month, we saw a lot of reviews talking about how it's similar to iPad, how it's different from the iPad. And in this video, I wanna talk about what it's actually like to use on a day-to-day -day basis, because honestly, there's a lot we have to talk about. There's some good things and some not so good things that I noticed after using this that maybe weren't mentioned in other reviews. So starting off with just a quick physical tour of this tablet, there are two different sizes. This is the smaller one, the S7. There's also an S7 Plus. Uh, so you get in about an extra inch, inch and a half of the screen. So you can have a larger display, significantly more expensive. Uh, but this one right here I found was the right size for me and I'll explain why later on in the video. But looking on the top or bottom or right or left side, the, the thing about tablets is you don't really know which way is the proper orientation. Assuming that you have it like landscape mode, then on the right and left side we have our speakers. So we have a quad speaker setup. And I found that these speakers, well the first big pro of this is that the speakers are sufficiently loud and I think they sound really good. So if you're watching media, if you're on a phone call, if you're on like a, a video, like a Zoom call or something, uh, the speakers do a great job. And I found that I had no complaints with the quality of them uh, given the size of this tablet. Then on the middle of the right side, we have our USB Type-C port. You can connect a lot of things to that. Now on the other side, you can see we have our microphone there. And I'll test out the, the video quality for you guys in a second if you're on a Zoom call, uh, just so you can see what the microphone would sound like there. But speaking of video quality, on the top of the center here, assuming you have landscape mode, you have your camera, I think that's a great location for it because a lot of people, when they're using that camera, they would probably be uh, setting up in like a laptop kind of mode and they're on a Zoom call or they're on a Skype call, whatever you're doing, I think that's a good location for the camera. And then of course, if we flip it over, we have the other two cameras. Again, good choice for Samsung to make a wide angle and an ultra wide angle lens. Uh, the wide angle is going to be a pretty good resolution and a pretty good focal length uh, for most stuff that you're doing. If you're scanning documents or taking pictures of like a room, if you're gonna draw on stuff, what, whatever you're doing, I find that I use that lens the most. But if you really wanted to actually use this as a camera, like if you're gonna be the person standing in a national park taking pictures with their tablet, then you know maybe the wide, ultra wide angle lens would be a good one to use. And now this video is taken with the front facing camera. So if you were on a Zoom meeting or some kind of conference call, it would look and sound something like this. Honestly, as far as webcams go, this one's definitely a lot better than most out there. It's a pretty sharp image. There's a little bit of noise in the darker corners like there and like there. And the audio quality, I think, sounds pretty good. This is not a studio. This is my office, which is a little bit more echoey. Pretty standard for a lot of offices. But comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of this video. And so the interesting thing about tablets is there's not really a single mainstream use for them. Like some people use them as their everyday laptop. Some people use them just for watching media. Some people use them if you're like an architect and you want to take pictures of different rooms and kind of draw the furniture furniture you want in there. Like there are so many different things you could be doing with the tablet that it's hard for me to say what the exact best setup for cameras is, but I think this one's pretty versatile. Now looking across the top of this tablet, we have our tray for SD card, uh, we have our microphone, we have our volume rocker, and then we have our power button here, which on the S7 actually doubles as a fingerprint sensor. The Galaxy S7 Plus on the other hand doesn't have the fingerprint sensor in the button. Instead it's going to be in the screen, and while normally I'm a big fan of the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor under the screen. I find that, again, with the tablet, you never know how people are using it, what orientation it's in, and I think that having it on the button on the outside is actually a better option here, despite them, you know, trimming things down for the smaller model. I think that was a really good move. And then of course on the bottom we have our nodes to connect to a keyboard. So I'll talk about the keyboard in a second because I did get the Samsung keyboard kind of case for this. And then of course looking on the front we have a very bright, very vibrant display, thin bezels all the way around, uh, and it's 120 hertz refresh rate. So I, honestly, I really like this display. I have nothing but good things to say about it after using it for a month. Like I said, bright, vibrant, responsive, and it just does a great job. Now the interesting thing about tablets is a pen is pretty much essential. So seeing how different tablets manage this, some of them have it where it goes in the tablet, some of them have it where it goes on top. Uh, this one has it where it goes on the back. And I found that uh, when I'm using this every day, I find that sometimes reaching back and just placing it there when it's like propped up, uh, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to exactly where it goes. And once you get it close enough, it kind of auto locates with the magnets and it sticks on there. And I think it does a decent job. Now the pen itself, is actually really nice. I like the texture of it. It feels a lot like a natural pen or pencil and having the button right there, sometimes I accidentally press that, but for the most part, it's in a really natural location again where you could use your thumb or your pointer finger uh, to just kind of push that if you're trying to like erase or something like that. It's a very fast pen, it's very responsive and now they have some cool S Pen gestures on here uh, that I found 
I mean, I used to not use S Pen gestures. I think the ones where you're like zooming in for the camera, like those kind of things have always been kind of gimmicky to me. But now when they have things like you can squiggle and take a screenshot, uh, or you can do some basic things like the right arrow, the left arrow, uh, I find that they're actually really useful. And I like that Samsung's really pushing forward what you can be doing with this peripheral device. And when you buy this tablet, you also have the option to buy Samsung's keyboard case, uh, which I have right here. And after using it for a while, I found that I mean, I have some mixed feelings. I really like some things about it, and there are some things that I really don't like about it. But overall, it's highly functional, it looks professional, uh, and I really like it for the most part. So I like how on the back they use the hinge right there. Uh, it's really a good hinge. I thought it would kind of get worn out a little bit or slow down at all. I think it's a very well-designed hinge. It holds it at any angle I want it to. Uh, and then, of course, on the top we have the little flap that the, the cameras are still open, so you can take pictures if you're using this with the case on, obviously. And then you can just flip this little flap back, and it does protect the pen. Uh, so not only is the pen being protected, but it's also being held in place. If you're traveling, you throw it in your bag, you're not going to be losing the pen anymore. I think that's a really nice thing to have. Then the keyboard is separate and detachable, which I like, so I can keep the case on and take the keyboard off if I'm just using it in tablet mode. And then if I want to put the keyboard back on, I can prop it up and use it like a laptop. Now, that's all the good stuff about this case. Overall, like I said, it's a nice case but there are some drawbacks. So one drawback is that there's really no way to prop up the tablet in any kind of vertical orientation. As soon as you start, if you bring this back like that, you make a little trifold, uh, it's a little bit too vertical and it's likely to fall forward. So I wish they added a little bit of a taper on the top or bottom. To be honest, I might just cut that so you can prop it up in a vertical mode. Sometimes vertical mode is what you need. And then of course, talking about the keyboard, I found that the keys, like they do a decent job and I tried a typing speed test. I can type like 62 words per minute. Normally I'm like 75 words per minute on most other keyboards. So I'm able to type reasonably fast with this, but definitely not nearly as fast as a normal standard keyboard. I found that some of the smaller peripheral keys like the punctuation, uh, sometimes they're a little bit weird and I accidentally hit the wrong key. And then the trackpad again uh, is a little bit plasticky. It gets the job done, but it's definitely far from a premium trackpad. Uh, it feels, it just the feel of it is not necessarily the best. All right, so you can probably tell that the hardware of the Tab S7 here is overall really nice. It's a really solid design. They thought of a lot of things. It's a really sleek, uh, thin bezels. It just, it's a really nice design overall, especially at this price point. Now we should start talking about the software. And this is really typical for Samsung products. As we see a lot of times, they have like the bleeding edge specs on a lot of the hardware, but sometimes their software is just a little bit behind. Looking at this tablet, it's kind of not that different. They, they added their One UI interface on here, which is really nice. You have some cool features. And I like having a lot of cool features on a tablet. And Samsung's known for having just a ton of features but there are some drawbacks. So when you're in dex mode, for example, which is one of the big selling points of this tablet, uh, is that you can actually switch between a normal tablet interface and more of like a laptop type interface or more of a desktop type interface, then dex sometimes is not, it's not perfect yet. Like it, it's a good idea and they're moving in the right direction, I think, but just a lot of apps are not optimized for that yet. A lot of times you find things that don't open to full screen or don't go to landscape mode. And that's a similar issue we're seeing even with just tablet mode as well. When you're in a normal tablet mode with just running Android on a tablet, you're going to have some apps that either don't go into landscape mode and they stay skinny, uh, or otherwise they just don't go full screen. Like weird things happen, for example, like the Fitbit app. You know, you want to see, you know, see your analytics for your workouts, maybe on your tablet here, uh, because you can get the app on there and it's going to be sideways, which then brings me into what I was saying before about how this case doesn't let you prop it up in a vertical orientation, a portrait mode. Uh, so there's some things that just don't quite mesh together perfectly when you're dealing with an Android tablet like this. But overall, I found that a lot of the apps do work really well. So like Microsoft apps, Samsung apps, uh, some Adobe apps, like they work pretty well. Uh, and then of course some Google apps work pretty well also, but the first two definitely work really, really well on a tablet here. So if you're trying to do stuff like Microsoft Word or Excel, I mean, this tablet definitely works really well. Admittedly, after trying to use this tablet kind of as a laptop here and there, I found that one of the biggest complaints I had was the My Files configuration, being that when I'm using a desktop or a laptop, I'm always moving files around, doing different things. And with this, like the My Files thing, it's just, it really leaves a lot to be desired. All right guys, so in conclusion, this tablet, as far as tablets go, has fantastic hardware. Overall, it's really fast, it runs really well, and for the basic stuff, it's a great tablet. If you're trying to get some more fringe uh, apps out there, there are a lot of them that maybe don't work perfectly on here, but like I said, the mainstream stuff is definitely going to work really well, 
But the thing is, tablets have always kind of lived in this limbo space between laptops and phones. And that space is actually closing in. So laptops are becoming more and more portable. Some of them you can even take the keyboards off and their touchscreen as well. And then phones are getting larger and larger and more powerful. And a lot of them are starting to even fold out into larger displays. So that leaves a weird space for a tablet where anything I'm trying to do that requires a lot of power, my laptop can do better. And anything I want that's portable, my phone could do better. But it's kind of similar to having like a sports car as your phone and like a truck for heavy lifting is your laptop. And while it's great to have one of each, sometimes what you really need is just a compact SUV. And I think that's where tablets come in. If you're trying to, you know, if you want just something in your kitchen to show you the recipes, if you want to watch media when you're laying in bed, if you're trying to travel and you want the perfect size thing uh, to watch media or to get some work done on the airplane, like the back of the seat tray, like tablets are definitely a great option for all of that. And I highly recommend it if that's what you're looking for. But comment down below, guys. Let me know what you think of the Galaxy Tab S7, if you think you'll be buying it or not, and what you think of the future for tablets. So, like I said, I don't really know what's gonna happen to tablets, if they're gonna be around, if they're gonna turn into laptops, but let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you next time.